what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling, feeling good. good. Today, guys, we're back here on the new video. Guess me, I'm ready for guests. Peace and makeup. My name is Devin. Welcome to the best video. Today, we're gonna be reacting to Vedettes with the Cruise. Mm. All right. So, wanna give us a try? You know how those guys are talking to us, right? Don't we ask more? Let's get into this video. Question: What's your name? Okay, thank you. My name is Maya Cook. Um, good evening, Senator Cruz. Thank you so much for coming to Yale this evening. And I think in the spirit of the Buckley Program celebration of intellectual diversity, I wanted to take a moment to celebrate our newest addition to the Supreme Court of the US, who I know we've already talked about, Justice Jackson. Since you're here tonight, though, in the name of fostering intellectual diversity in academic spaces, it would appear to me that you already recognize the importance of new perspectives. And as a young woman, seeing Justice Jackson on the Supreme Court is invigorating, truly. And on Tuesday, it baffled me that you would ask such flagrantly racist questions um, to this exceedingly well-qualified candidate. Your colleagues in the GOP promised a respectful and dignified hearing for Justice Jackson, and to me, you did not uphold this. So today, I wanted to create a space where you might be able to challenge your own thinking, as prudent scholars often do. So I'm here to ask you, what are two nice comments you can give about recent nominee Justice Jackson's judicial experience, besides from she has an easy smile. Yeah, you racist. What's the comment? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start by thanking you for being here. And thank you for asking a substantive, uh, important question. Thank you for engaging in a conversation. I think we all would be better off if we engage in substantive conversations. There's a lot to praise uh, about Judge Jackson. Uh, she is very, very bright. She is very, very accomplished. Uh, she is very talented. Uh, she has an impressive and inspiring personal story. I, I will say, sitting listening to her opening remarks where she described her personal story, she described her parents' journey, I, you had to be dead not to be inspired by that journey. And, and, and listen, I will say more broadly, if you look at the history of our country, if you look at, at the history of our country on race, it is absolutely inspiring to see an African-American woman serving on the Supreme Court. I will also point out that when it comes to issues of race, I think both the press and the modern left uh, are hypocritical on this question. Oh. That they only define someone as black, or they only define someone as Hispanic, if they agree with them ideologically. Hey. So, about Clarence this. Thomas has been on the court for decades. Clarence Thomas is a black man. The left hates him. They despise Clarence Thomas. And I'll tell you, by the way, the treatment of Clarence Thomas on the left is markedly different than, say, Antonin Scalia. Antonin Scalia was brilliant. He and Justice Thomas were every bit as conservative. And yet, the vitriol that was heaped on Clarence Thomas, um, nasty, racist language from the left. Um, there was one magazine cover that, 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 that showed Clarence Thomas as an Uncle Tom sitting at, at Scalia's feet. I think it was racist and disgusting. And, and listen, I will say this as an Hispanic man. As an Hispanic man, Jorge Ramos went on, on television in Spanish and described me as a traitor to my race oh. for daring. <laughs> okay, look, that says something about the view of the left, that they're telling you, you have one way to, to view things and one way only. And if you don't, we'll demonize and attack you. So look, and, and by the way, in terms of having the first African-American woman on the Supreme Court, there was an opportunity for this to happen 20 years ago. There's a judge named Janice Rogers Brown. Janice Rogers Brown was a Supreme Court justice on the California Supreme Court. 
George W. Bush nominated Janice Rogers Brown to the D.C. Circuit. At the beginning of, beginning of his presidency, he, he nominated Judge Brown to the D.C. Circuit. The Democrats filibustered Judge Brown. That filibuster was led by a guy named Joe Biden. It also included people like Chuck Schumer. It included Pat Leahy, it included Dianne Feinstein. Feinstein. Yeah. They filib the reason they filibustered Judge Janet Janice Rogers Brown is because she was a black woman, but she was also conservative. And they did not want her to go to the Supreme Court. And they succeeded in filibusting her. They delayed her nomination for a couple of years until it finally went through. She finally went to the D.C. Circuit. Now, everyone who was harumphing in the media that if you oppose an African-American woman who's a qualified judge, you're a racist, precisely zero of them thought it was racist to, for Democrats, including Joe Biden, to filibuster Janice Rogers Brown. By the way, there was another nominee that Bush put forward, a guy named Miguel Estrada. Uh, Miguel is an incredibly qualified Supreme Court advocate. He was nominated the D.C. Circuit as well. The Democrats filibustered him. If you read the memos that were leaked from Ted Kennedy's lawyers, here's what Ted Kennedy's lawyers said about Miguel Estrada. They said, we must stop him, quote, because he is Hispanic. This man is very knowledgeable. That's what Ted Kennedy's lawyers mm. said in writing. Now, I'm going to suggest to you, if you oppose somebody because of their race, that is the definition of racist. Huh. And look, I'll point out in your question, you said that my questioning of Judge Jackson was you used the term racist. Listen, racism is a horrific evil in this country. It is also an insult that the left tosses around casually. I would welcome, if you look at the questions I asked Judge Jackson, every single question I asked her concerned her record. Either her record, record as a judge, sentencing defendants before her, or her record writing academic materials and law reviews, or her record giving speeches to law schools. All of that is the job of, of the Senate in, in the advice and consent process. And so, respectfully, I could not disagree more deeply when you say it is racist to examine a judge based on their record. If the Democrats wanted to oppose Janice Rogers Brown because they oppose conservatives, you know, do you think the Democrats were all sexist when they voted party line against Amy Coney Barrett? I, I'm willing to bet you don't, yeah. because she's not a liberal woman. So you can't have it both ways, which is that when a Democratic nominee has a certain characteristic, anyone who opposes them is racist or sexist or what have you, but when a Republican nominee has those characteristics, it's open season and you can go after them full force and and the left is righteous in doing so. It, 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 the standard should be the same, and I'm going to suggest what the standard should be, is we should examine people based on their actual records based on and whether and to what extent that record demonstrates they will defend the constitutional rights of all Americans. I think that's what people care about. True. It's mustard. We just cross that. That's all right there. I love the fact that he... Damn. So, so knowledgeable. And yeah. with a lot of history. Yeah. And he is very, very smart. Like, he's very smart. When the lady asked a question, he was very confident. He just relaxed. He was like, thank you very much for asking such a knowledgeable question. And uh, he was, he was full of someone who knows what he's talking about. And he crushed the answer and gave her, he really answered that question. Really, really nice. He crushed the answer. And I was really impressed by him. I was very, very impressed. Relaxed. I was like, very well. I was never expecting him to answer in such a manner. Me, myself. Oh. But he killed it. And the lady was... Was marveled by his answer. Yeah. I learned a lot through his teachings right there. And I know more about the Democrats and the Republicans more better. And that word called racism. They threw it around to create chaos most of the time. 
to create some havoc and stuff or because of skin color and stuff. So I love his answer and I, I love how mature he was while answering the lady. What do you think? Um, I love the way he answered. He didn't answer her like he's trying to um, undermine her or anything. Yes. He just gave her an answer like someone curious asking the question, why do you do this? And he answered that so not like she was trying to bring him down and he was trying to uh, show that he knows everything. He just educated everyone there. Sure. That's exactly what he did. And when people throw out um, things like you're yeah, racist or you're yeah, sexy or you're sexist, majority of times it's not actually true because sometimes people don't understand the full definition of those words. Just feel like if you're like, uh, you can't be here or you can't do this job because you're not qualified. They'll be like, they're judging me because of my skin color. Skin color, yeah. That is the most lady excuse every time. And there was one lady I was talking about this Black Lives Matter when uh, a white woman was holding um, this Black Lives Matter t-shirt. I just like, um, it's okay. Like, you don't need to overestimate it. All lives matter. That's what she said. All lives matter. I'm black. My life matter. I'm okay. I'm stuff like that. And she was like, I'm black. Black people kill more black people than the white, white people kill. Then she was like, do you see us wearing black life matter because our fellow people are killing us? And she was like, if a white man were to kill a white man, will you wear a white uh, life matter? Life matter. So you don't need to like make it be about a particular race. Because if you start doing that way, people will feel like that race is oppressed. That race are identified as victims, which make them feel undermined. And true. Okay. So don't make it, I don't know how to put it, when it comes to race, people people don't understand a lot about it. We are free. Because people like saying blacks are oppressed, blacks are not free, blacks are restricted. It makes people feel like they, they feel like they are born a victim. And if you walk around that ideology, anything, anywhere you are, anybody you meet, any statement they give to you, you feel like they're attacking you. They're putting you down. So we need to understand what racism is before putting those words out every day. And when you say someone's being sexist, what are they saying? Why did they make that statement? Don't just be like, yeah, Mr. Janice. Mm. What did the person say? Don't throw us big, big words you don't know the meaning to just because you can't say it. A fancy though. <laughs> but I love his explanation. I love the way he was able to educate everybody, including me, I was educated and I really did enjoy it. So guys, comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up, share this video as many as can. Subscribe to the channel, guys, know how to do it. See you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers. Pass that 808, that don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku, bitch, in my bed. I got scales all